Hey guys, today's lesson is on factors and greatest common factors. So some of this is hopefully a review for you. Um, remember the definition for prime number. A prime number is a whole number greater than one whose only factors are one in itself. The example they gave is five. Two would also be a prime number because the factors of two are only one and two. Then we talked about, or talked about composite numbers. So a composite number, any whole number greater than one that has more than two factors. And then the prime factorization of a number is just when you are expressing the, pro, um, the product of factors of a number that are all primes. So for example, in this case, they said 45 is equal to three squared times five. So both three and five are prime numbers. So there's a few things we're going to have to do. First, we need to identify is the number prime or composite. And then we also need to know how to get that prime factorization. So really quickly, um, you may have learned how to do prime factorization in the past using a factor tree. If not, that's what I'm going to be using to do prime factorization. So that'll give you some review. All right, so let's just go to that first section. And the first set of directions, find the factors of each number and then classify that number as prime or as composite. So the first number is 41. Now we know that one is a factor of every number. So I know I can do one times 41. Are there any other numbers that go into 41 besides one and 41? And there are not. So the factors of 41 are simply 1 and 41. That means that this number is prime because it has two factors only, one in itself. Let's look at number 3, 90. So I know that 1 is a factor of 90. It's an even number, so we know that 2 is also a factor. Uh, 90 is divisible by 3. Does 4 go into 90? No. 5 will, though, because 90 ends in 0. All numbers that end in 0 are multiples of 5, so 5 works. What about 6? Is 6 a factor of 90? And if you're not sure, you can always just pull up your calculator and type it in. So 90 divided by 6, ah, it is divisible by 6 because it goes in 15 times. 7 is not a factor, nor is 8. 9 definitely is a factor, and so is 10. Now here's where it gets helpful. I know that 9 times 10 is 90. So the next number after 10 is going to be 6 times whatever. So that's 6 times 15. And then 5 times, oops, 5 times 18. Then it would be 3 times 30, 2 times 45, and then 1 times 90. So there are my factors. Let me erase that. There are my factors of 90. So it has more than two factors. Therefore, 90 is going to be composite. Okay. All right. So um, looking at number two and number four. So I'm not going to list out all the factors for number four. I'm just going to give you a heads up on that because it'll take too long. Um, but I know for like 121, I know one is a factor. And I also know 11 because 11 times 11 and 121. Now there might be more factors, but I know that there are more than two. So this has got to be composite. And so for number four, I know this number is obviously divisible by one, and I'm going to go ahead and put 2,865, one in itself. I also know it's divisible by five. Five times what? I don't know, okay? I don't know, I don't know off the top of my head. I could certainly type it in and figure it out, but I can already tell right now that this is a composite number because it has more than two factors, for sure. Okay, so we're going to move on from that. All right, now we're going to find prime factorization, and I am going to do this. So 600, when you find the prime factorization of a number, you can use a factor tree. Now, you need to think of any two factors of 600. It doesn't matter which two you start with. 
with the exception you don't want to do 1 times 600. For example, 600 I know is 6 times 100. I also know it's 60 times 10. Uh, 300 times 2. Off the top of my head, I know that those are factors. So start with any one of those pairs. I'm going to do 60 times 10. Now I know that 60 can be broken down, right, into 6 times 10. And I know that 10 can be broken down into 2 times 5. Okay, 6 could be broken down further into 2 times 3. That 10 we just said is 2 times 5. Now, 2 can only be broken down into 1 times 2. 2 is a factor, so I'm just going to bring it straight down. I'm sorry, 2 is prime, and 5 is also prime. Those are all primes. So we said 2 is prime, 5 is prime, 3 is also prime. So I have now finished making my factor tree for 600. So when I do the prime factorization, I'm going to say 2, how many 2's do I have? 1, 2, 3, so that's 2 cubed times 3 times 5 squared. So that is the prime factorization of 600. That's it. Let's do another one. Let's do, I'm going to skip number, well, no, I'll go ahead. We'll do that together too. Let's do 175. Okay, so I'm going to make my factor tree. Uh, I know that it is definitely divisible by 5. So 175 divided by 5 is 35. Okay, 35 breaks into 5 times 7. 5 is prime, so it's 7. So this is going to be 5 squared times 7. That's it. Let's do this one. Now this time it's negative 150. So normally, you've probably never done a factor tree for a negative number. So I'm going to do this as negative 1 times 150. Alright, and now we'll break it down. So when I do 150, I'm going to do 15 times 10. Maybe you picked a different pair of factors here. In the end, we're still going to get the same. So I'm going to bring that negative 1 down so I don't forget. 15 would be 3 times 5. 10 would be 2 times 5. And then 3, 5, 2, those are all primes. Negative 1 is not a prime number, but I'm going to bring it down anyway. So that would be negative 1 times 2 times 3 times 5 squared. Okay, so we've done the second part. All right, now it says the next, the bottom part, factor each monomial completely. So when we do this, 32x squared, so this time we're just going to write the prime factorization of 32. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So I know that 32 is divisible by 2. It would be 2 times 16. Well, 16 would be 2 times 8. And then 8 would be 2 times 4. Ah, and 4 is 2 times 2. Okay? And then the x squared is times x times x. That's it. That's, that is how you would list out the factors for 32x squared. When I come over here and do 18m squared in, I'm going to do it the same way. Well, it's even, so I'm going to start off with 2, because 2 is a prime factor. So it'd be 2 times 9, but 9 is equal to 3 times 3. Okay, and then m squared would be m times m, and then times that n. That's it. 49 is just going to be 7 times 7. It's not even, but 7 is a prime number, so 7 times 7. And then a cubed will be a times a times a. And then b squared, b times b. Okay, so we've done this entire first page together. Let's go to the next page. So this time we're going to find the greatest common factor of monomials. So we've got, you hopefully know about greatest common factor um, from earlier grades. I believe you learned about that in sixth grade. So if I'm going to find the greatest common factor, or GCF, of each set of monomials. So let's look at number one. If I want to do that, there's more than one way to do this. Um, 
one way to do it. So I've got 12 and 48 is just to list out all the factors of 12, all the factors of 48 and be done. And that's probably how you learned. But when you look at, say, like number 10, we're going to actually list out the prime factorization of 12 and 48 um, because that's going to help us when we get to those monomials that have um, variables hooked onto them. So the factors of 12, so that would be 2 times 6. Well, 6 is going to be 2 times 3. Okay, so, that's the, so I've done that for 12. 48 would be 2 times 24. 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So what's common in both lists? They both have 2's. There's another pair of 2's. And there's a pair of 3's in both lists. So the GCF is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 or 12. So the GCF of 12 and 48 is 12. Let's do number 4. Going straight down. So if I do 32, I'm going to say that's 2 times 16. And 16 is 2 times 8. And 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. Okay, 54 would be 2 times, what is that, 25, 27? 2 times 20, oops, don't write down the 27. 2 times 27. 27 is equal to 3 times 9, and 9 is equal to 3 times 3. All right, so I see both lists have a 2, and that's it. So the GCF here is just 2. Okay, now if you come to um, two terms that don't have anything in common, then if you look back at the top of this page, it talks about them being relatively prime, and we'd say the GCF is 1. Remember, 1 is actually a factor of every number, right? We're going to skip number 7 and go directly to number 10. So I've got 49x. So when I find, I'm going to list out its factors. So 49 would be 7 times 7, and then 49x. 7 times 7 times x. All right, 343. Now, I'm going to take a guess here that it's divisible by 7. It's not divisible by 2. So I'm typing 343 divided by 7 in my calculator. And guess what? It's 7 times 49. And then 49 we know is 7 times 7. Then the x squared times x times x. So they both have a 7 and another 7. And there's an x in both. So the GCF would be 7 times 7 times x, or 49x. And this is the reason why I had you list out, list out the prime factors before. Because when you come to problems like this, you're going to have to do that with the variables. We're going to do one more, and then you can try some on your own. So 12a, so that would be two, 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3, then times the A, and then the 18ABC. Well, 18 is 2 times 9. Oops, you erased that 9, because 9 is not prime. And then 9 breaks down into 3 times 3, then times A, times B, times C. So they both have 2s. I see a 3 in both lists and an A in both lists. And that's it. So the GCF would be 2 times 3 times A, or 6A. Okay, now it's going to be your turn. I want you to do number 7 and 16 and 19. And then you do not have to do the rest. You can skip the remaining problems here. Make sure you write the word skip. So pause the video, do 7, 16, and 19. Okay guys, welcome back. So you're going to pause the video and check over these problems. So here's number 7. And then 16 and 19. 
Okay, so if you've got questions about anything from this lesson, make sure you bring them to my attention. Ask me so that I can be sure to help you. All right, so go ahead. If you're finished, turn this in and work on your independent practice.